doing a review on the Danger Power Ready. As you can see, it's got quite a bit of use to it. Um, I had it for a while. Wanted to make sure I put a lot of paint through it before I do the review. And uh, some things I've noticed will come up as we go on. So, Danger Power Ready. Nice zip up pad case is probably one of the nicest I've seen. Comes with a 14 and 16 inch front. It comes with three backs, 685, 689, and a 693. It comes with a metal sleeve to replace the acrylic clear see-through one if you somehow happen to break that, which I have it and I've taken dry kits to it, I've banged it up and whatnot. One of the most important tools that you cannot lose would be this uh, large T-handle Allen key, which is to remove the bolt. And this is to get into the another T-handle, smaller one, to get into the top to move the frame from the the body from the frame. Comes with. Dangerous Power DP40 Lube, which I've never had the use, so I can't really tell you on if it's you know, the quality or whatnot. Probably, you know, just for this particular video, we'll go ahead and use it this one time. I normally use Hater. Comes with. Service Plus plan, uh, I guess advertising gets you to make sure it goes in for warranty. Nice full color manual, uh, very detailed. Uh, it will explain everything you need to do from maintenance to how to do your board and whatnot. Real nice set of fall in Allen keys. With a complete set. And a powering kit. It normally comes with this uh, wraps on off. Um, I haven't tried the newer version, but on the F8, I'm not sure if this has changed at all, but I damaged two tanks with the with this lever. It just depressed into the pin, pressed into deep, and it basically smashed the, the red pistons on like two different tanks. I'm not too trusting of these. So I just switched out with a Bond Love Cam Drive ESA, and it kind of matches better anyways. I had a different ray running on it for a while. I found it to be able to keep up better with the uh, high rates of fire and whatnot. But instead I threw back on the stock one to try and break it in and see if I noticed a different. Off the bat uh, at high rates of fire I did notice um, some drop off. We play a limited uh, which is called uncapped semi out here so at 10.5 BPS which I've tried the ramp it's, it keeps up no problem. First off the bat you can see I did put on a different set of grips. I, I'm just really fond of the um, acrylic grips. Uh, Bundah things. No, that's more of a personal preference. The clamping feed neck with the, I would say, thumb wheel, uh, really makes it easy to adjust. I have a, no problems at all putting any hopper I've had on it. Uh, I've tried pulses, um, Pinocchios, rotors, and whatnot. So feed neck works fine. Real nice, low profile, and. Um, Go ahead and pull out a rotor. So it's quite simply one of the smallest guns I've had. Um, one of the things well, you know, a lot of guys strip out on is the trigger. Your uh, some guys like this uh, curved trigger, and some like this rake style a little bit better. Personally, I like the rake style, so it's rotate the trigger around. 
Um, I have noticed in some games when you take a dive and you really get into it, you look and you accidentally end up having to trigger sideways. But that's only happened twice in the whole time I've used this thing. Uh, triggers adjustable by three points. Uh, very adjustable to your liking. It's uh, I don't really like the breakaway uh, style of magnets. I'm, I'm more into the uh, magnet style that uh, repels the trigger away versus this breakaway. Um, what I notice is either I get it just too soft or too hard on the the magnet tension itself. So that's only I'll probably mention. Uh, the eyes work really well. Uh, when it breaks paint, though, the problem is it goes into an eye fault mode. Turns it off and capsule marker off. That's how I had it set up. Um, it's definitely not one of those uh, self-cleaning eyes. You, you, you have to pop these off and uh, clean them. So if you break paint, it's one of the minor nuisances. Uh, once I had this, time, this thing finally tuned in with a bolt delay and breach delay and everything, uh, no longer breaks paint. But during my whole tinkering process, it was kind of a headache. But now that i got gotten that out of the way, marker sheet's fine. Okay, the board is real nice. Eight brand page OLED board. As you can see. But it's fully featured. Uh, has all your modes. Uh, set up different profiles. I even set up a profile like a training mode just to show you know show off how fast I can shoot this thing. Uh, it's kind of dim in the sunlight like most other o o OLEDs. But uh, fully featured. You're not going to find any other aftermarket board that's going to beat this. Um, the board is pretty much what makes it, which makes this gun in particular. The board is just absolutely amazing. Uh, for someone like me, that's used to tinkering, you know, no big deal. Uh, but for your casual user, your everyday user that's not too familiar with how to set up a gun, you can actually set up, put them in a, I think it's called a setup mode. You shoot three times and it sets up your, your dwell, your idle, and all that. Uh, what's pretty good, uh, I even ended that, I did that. And I did notice I was able to lower the dwell down to 9. And when I tried to lower another one, I started getting erratic uh, chrono and lots of drop off. I put it back up one and it worked fine. So it was dead on on that. I was able to lower the uh, bolt delay. I was able to lower that two more uh, without any problems. So it's pretty dead on. You don't have to tinker it too much. So the, the gun kind of pretty much takes out all the guesswork for the guy. You don't have to go, oh, what's your best settings? Cause, um, what you've noticed is that a lot of guys, you've copied their settings. It just doesn't work on your gun. Every gun is different. So with this board in particular, it takes all the guess out work out for you. Uh, the operating pressure on this particular marker, I notice at 9, it, it does go up. And uh, it, I'm not sure if it's more or less of a user preference thing, but if you Increase your dwell, you need to run at a lower operating pressure, which in theory should be easier on paint. Uh, right now, I'm able to shoot Drax's Silver and whatnot at 9 dwell, and I think it's around operating pressure is close to I forget, it's, it's rather high. I haven't used this marker in a while, but it's it's a lot higher than it was stock with a dwell of over 20, I think. Uh, but shoots fine even the lower dwells. Uh, it is It gets a little bit louder. Um, and, uh, it, I don't know, it's still a pretty smooth mark, uh, shooting marker. It's not the quietest, it's, it's got a real, uh, it's got a nice pop to it. Um, it's not like your casual spool where it's like a, it sounds like a slow release of air. It's kind of like a, or almost like a pop it where it's a quick release and it's a nice, it's a snappier sound versus a, the slow release of air. You can, if you pay attention to your typical spool, you can hear it's a smooth, a smoother, slower release of air. Is the only way I can really describe it without, you know, actually firing the marker. Um, so we'll go off to go ahead and we'll move this marker. So we'll, we'll take all this aside. Show the easiest guys to break down. Take your big Allen your T handle. You stick it down. And I haven't had any problems with scratching this thing. See, when you turn clockwise, 